So June 2010, June 2021, question 10. So it says calculate the matrix product. So remember we're doing row times column. So this would be five times two, which will give us 10 plus four times zero, that is zero. And then we can go this same row times this column. So five times one is five plus four times three is 12. Five times negative four, that will give us negative 20 plus four times six, 24. Now we're on to this second row times each column. So we have negative three times two, that will give us negative six plus negative two times zero, that is zero. And then negative three times one, that will give me negative three plus negative two times three, that will give me a negative six. Then I have negative three times negative four, that will give me 12 plus negative two times six, that will give me a negative 12. So I'll, in the end, I'll have 12 minus 12, and we can now work those out to get our final two by three matrix. And as we've explained before, we know what our resulting matrix would have been. So we have 10 plus zero, that is 10, five plus 12, that is 17, negative 20 plus four, that will give us four, negative six plus zero, negative six, negative three minus six, that is negative nine, and 12 minus 12, that will leave us with zero. So this is our answer when we do this matrix product. Part two now says, state why the two matrices in A are conformable for multiplication. So we've looked at that a lot. To anybody, why are the two matrix above conformable for multiplication, why the two matrices are conformable for multiplication? The number of rows in the first matrix is equal to the number of columns in the second matrix. Uh, um, it's the other way around. So it's actually the column from the first is equal to the row in the second. But very good. But it should be the column coming on. This is row times column. So row times column. So it is two by two. And the number of rows here is two. So it should be the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix so that is it part b now says determine the inverse of 5 4 negative 3 negative 2. so inverse we know that inverse is equal to 1 over the 1 over the determinant being multiplied by the adjoint so we first need to find the determinant and the determinant would be, so let's call it A, the matrix is A, the determinant could be five times negative two minus four times negative three. So our determinant is equal to negative 10 minus, what's this? Negative 12, which would give us minus 10 plus 12, which will give us two. So our determinant 
is two. So now working on the inverse, it is one over the determinant, which is one over two times the adjoint. And we know the first flip, so this becomes negative two, and this becomes five, this becomes a negative four, and this becomes a positive three. And now we can go ahead and work or simplify. So it is a half being multiplied by negative two. That will leave me with negative one. And now a half being multiplied by negative four. That will leave me with negative two. A half being multiplied by three. That will leave me with three over two. And a half being multiplied by five. That will leave me with five over two and that is my inverse so negative one negative two three over two five over two any questions from these so far all right so everybody is good so part C now says the diagram below shows triangle OAB in which OA is equal to R, OB is equal to S, and in addition, E is the midpoint on the line CD, and OC is three quarter of OA, and AD is equal to two third of AB. And they want us to write in terms of R and S the simplest form and expression for CD. So if we're going from CD, CD is equal to, we can go CA plus AD. But we don't know what AD is. Only information that was given pertaining to AD is that AD is equal to two-thirds of AB. So therefore, first, we'll need to find out what AB is. Is so AB is equal to we could go AO plus OB. So therefore, AB is equal to AO would now be a negative R plus OB would be S. So this is AB, and they told us that AD is equal to two thirds of AB. So now we can put this into our formula. So therefore, CD into our vector so cd is equal to ca would have been a quarter of r it is a quarter of r plus ad ad is two-third ab and we got ab as minus r plus s And now we can expand and simplify. So therefore, CD is equal to a quarter R um, minus two thirds R plus two thirds S. So from our R, if you put this in your calculator, so CD is equal to, if you have a quarter, a quarter, quarter, minus two thirds, calculator will give you minus five over 12. So it is minus five over 12, R plus two thirds S. And that is or final answer for CD. So CD is equal to minus 5 over 12R plus 2 thirds. If you're not using your calculator, you can work out your fractions as well. The 1 over 4 minus 2 thirds, and you will still get the same answer as minus 5 over 12R. So that is um, our expression in its simplest form. Next, they require for us to find OE. So this is O to E. So we can go O to C, then C to E. 
and we know that E is a midpoint on CD and we just found out what CD is. So we can work that and we know that O to C is equal to three quarters of OA. So it is three quarters of R. Very good, Amoy. So therefore, OE, OE is equal to OC plus CE. I know that OE is equal to OC, they told us, is three quarters of OA and OA is R. So three quarters of OA plus CE. Remember, E is a midpoint on the line CD. And we just found what CD is. So it will be a half of CD, which is minus 5 over 12 plus 2 thirds S. And no, so this is minus what 12 R. So now we can go ahead and expand and simplify. So therefore, OE is equal to, so we have back our three quarters R. Now a half multiply by 5 over 12. So let's put that up in our calculator. A half been multiplied by minus 5 over 12. So what we get is minus 5 over 24. So this will be minus 5 over 24 R and a half being multiplied by 2 thirds. You'll get 1 third S. So plus 1 third S. And we can now simplify our like terms. So therefore, OE is equal to when you do 3 quarters minus 5 over 24, what you'll get is 13 over 24, as Amoy says. So it is 13 over 24 R plus 1 third S. And that is our final answer for OE. And as I said, we did this last week, so you can also refer back to last week's class for revision. Now, part D says the points O, Q, and R are coordinates 0, 0, 5, 2, and negative 1, 4, respectively. And the first question they ask us to write OR as a column vector. And as I said, when you're looking at OR as a column vector, it is just looking at what R is so you're taking from your graph exactly. Yes, negative one, four. So as a column vector, it will be written as negative one, four. So this is what our answer would look like. And it's one mark, so you're literally just taking it from your um from your graph. Part two, it now asks us to determine the magnitude of QR. So let us see QR. So first we need to find out what would have been the coordinates for QR. We can work it out instead of going through um, the entire vector process of QR is equal to QO plus OR. You could also do one, well, no, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So negative six, and then one, two, and two up. So therefore, QR is equal to negative six, two. And we saw that just now from our graph. And if you work it out using vectors, it would be the same thing. So QR is equal to negative 
six two. So therefore, so QR is equal to negative six two. So we can now find the magnitude of QR and we know it would be the square root of the square of each. So it would be minus six square plus, so I have to rewrite that just now, that's a bracket. So minus six square plus the two, so it is two square. So what we'll have is QR is equal to the square root of negative six square. That will give us what a positive 36 plus two square. That will give us a positive four. So therefore QR is equal to the square root of 40. Which is the same thing as 2 root 10. Yes, or which is the same thing as 6.32. All of those same exact answer. And that is the end of or January, June 2021 past paper.